Good day, lovelies. Welcome to today's video. Today is a bit of a special day for me because we are going to shoot two incredibly special cars today. And we are also not going to do this on just some public road. We are going to do this at a very special location you will be seeing soon. About the cars. Um, what is it we are going to shoot today? As said, it's two very special cars. Um, it's two Audis and it's two Audi Quattros. Um, that alone feels amazing to say. The first one, which is incredible already, is the Audi Quattro GR4. I don't think I have to say any more than this, do I? Um, and the other car. And it gives me literal goosebumps to think about this. The other car is the Audi Sport Quattro S1 E2. Um, yep. I actually just said that. We are going to drive to France today to shoot those cars and we are going to meet up with Benoit who owns those two cars and um, yeah. You should stay tuned for this and stay all the way to the end because I'll also show you how I edit some of the photos in the end so you will get amazing cars, POV photography and editing all in today's video so there isn't anything more you can ask for, right? So please um Give me the, the watch time, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, but yeah. I think I said everything I want to say and with all that said and done. Let's go over to the shoot. We are on a fucking private airfield right now, driving around with cars like this, and I can shoot them. And you know what the best part about all of this is? It's legal. We are doing this legitimately. It feels crazy. Gerade, gerade, ja, vor, vor, vor. Okay, so now we've got a polarizer on. Ah, okay, so usually I would shoot this with just my hand without a tripod, but because this is possibly one of a one of a kind situation, you know, once of a lifetime. I want to make the best out of it, so I'm going to use a tripod so that there's no shake or motion blur or shit like that. Because in situations like this you want to do a bit more effort than usually, because if you don't you will regret it later. Uh, I have to change the tripod adapter here. Because 70 to 200 is so heavy. You have to put the lens on the tripod instead of the camera because otherwise the weight on the lens bayonet right here would be too much and could actually break the camera. And that's why I'm throwing this on right now. Okay. Get in there. Come on. So now we can put it on the tripod and have a look at it. 
Okay, so now I have to adjust the polarizer because you can see right here in the windshield there's a lot of reflections. So if I turn the polarizer, you can see that the reflections in the windshield slowly fade away and that's what I want. Maybe I'm actually going to take two photos so I can layer them in post because I want the shadows and the reflections in the side windows as well as in the front uh, window to be gone. So yeah, I, I'll take two pictures and compose them later. In order to make it easier later on to compose the two photos, I'll put it on manual focus right here. So I'll first focus on the part of the car that is closest to me, which is this corner right here. Then I'll put the lens in manual and put the ISO all the way down because shutter speed isn't a problem if you're using a tripod. Underexpose just a little bit and go for it. Now I'm turning the polarizer to get rid of the reflections in the windshield. Doing it again. Now I've got two photos. You can see one has the reflections removed in the side window, the other one in the windshield. And we can compose those two later in Photoshop and it will look really, really nice. Now I'm going back a bit so I can get to the full 200 millimeters. Also, I want to line myself up right in the middle of this white line here. I have to adjust the tripod a little bit. Oh, holy fuck, this looks amazing. Okay. And go for it. And now, because we're using a tripod, as you can see, this is pretty sharp. It's not the sharpest because the lens I'm using is 13 years old, but for such an old lens, I'd say it looks amazing. All right. Okay, what's next? Um, maybe get a bit closer and get some close-up shots from the headlights. And I will be switching to the 35 millimeter later. But for now, I'm fine with the 70 to 200. Maybe something like this. Yeah, that looks nice as well. Just a polarizer again. Like this. And a bit brighter maybe. Yeah, like this. And go. Yeah, let's go back again. From a bit of a side angle now. I'll shoot it like like this. Oh fuck yeah. I want to make the camera a bit lower actually. Because the lower your camera is, the more aggressive the car looks. Because your camera is looking up to the car. And so does the viewer later. And that is like showing dominance from the car. I know it sounds stupid, but that way you can make a car look aggressive and dominant. And that's something you really want to do with such amazing cars like this, especially with sports cars in general. Okay, and go. This is sick. This is absolutely sick. Let me get some shots with the phone. That's amazing. Okay, now let's get some front-on shots. We have to turn the car around just a bit. Fuck me. Ah! I just came. And I'm not joking. Oh, fuck. You know, fuck Instagram followers, fuck YouTube views. This is the shit I want to do. <laughs> oh, fuck me. Oh, this video is getting demonetized so bad because of all the swear words I'm using, but fuck that. I don't even have monetization now that I say it, but yeah. Uh, okay, ISO down to 100 again. Just the shutter speed accordingly. 
aperture all the way open go to two second self timer so it's not shaken focus press the shutter release the camera now it got the shot perfectly in focus and razor sharp okay now i think we'll shoot some close-ups with the 35 yeah some 35 close-ups and then we shoot both cars together okay so i don't need the tripod with my 35 so I'll throw that back into the car i should have closed the trunk because all the snow is getting in fuck i didn't didn't think about that well the more you know let's put the lens caps on so let's get both cars together now maybe with the tripod no i don't need it i don't need a tripod okay We're getting some close-ups of the s1 and we shoot both cars together and then we'll get some rollers those are going to be insane Like, you know, sex is cool, but this might be better. Well, I'm actually pretty sure it's better, but I can't say that too loud because otherwise I'm going to get the shit beaten out of me. That's the team right there. What the fuck? So now on to the best part of all, we're going to do the rolling shots. Ooh, let's go baby, doing the rolling shots right now. Okay, um, so because my car is pretty small, I have to get rid of all the shit that's in my trunk because, well, that's the space that I need. So let's just close up all the bags, put lens caps on everything, make sure everything is covered up sealed what's this that's for the 35 oh yeah for switch lenses because i'm not going to use the 35 for the rollers i will actually be using my canon 20 for the 70 because with rolling shots you want to have a really wide angle or at least you want to have the opportunity to go with a real wide angle um my 20 for the 70 is an f4 but that's okay because with rolling shots, generally speaking, you want to open up the aperture quite a bit to uh, close down the aperture, I mean. Because with rolling shots, you want to close down your aperture quite a bit. So that you can get everything in focus. Because the faster you get, the better the shots will be. But also, the more you're risking the fact of like having photos that are blurry and out of focus. That's why you want to close the aperture like to f8 or something. Because then you will get the best and sharpest results. And honestly, for this, the 24 to 70 f4 is perfect. I'm gonna throw everything out of the car. That's why we have bags. I was originally planning on using the radios for the rolling shots because that's the best way to tell people how to drive. But we only have two radios and we're driving with three cars right now so that's not going to work so i've just used my hands to show him hey and now i'm on an airfield with my car but it's a diesel and it has close to no power fuck me <laughs> 
Okay, get myself in front of the two Audis. Okay, so now we're gonna switch things up. Oh, let's go fucking dodgy. Okay. Okay, uh, autofocus, slow shatter, something like 1 over 60th, ISO 100. weekend <laughs> today's sunday we have shot all of this on saturday so yesterday and i've already edited all the photos and i've also cut the video up until this very point right here you can maybe see it in the background there yeah so what can i say it was an awesome experience it was something i think i will never experience again or at least not in this form like the combination of those two cars and the fact that we were able to drive around with those and the fact that we've been shooting on a private airfield. Like all of this combined, that's a package I will probably never experience again. So before we take a look onto the final photos, I just want to say a few words. First one is thanks to my girlfriend Sophia. Um, huge thanks for being with me at the shoot and for also for recording. Huge thanks also goes out to Noah for giving me his camera, which we've been using as a B camera for the video. Everyone I've just mentioned will be linked down in the video description, so please make sure to check them out as well. The video wouldn't have been possible without those people. And also one thing from my side, if you've watched the video all until this point, I'd expect that you have enjoyed it and then it would be awesome if you could leave a little click onto the subscribe button. It's free and it helps me out a lot and it makes me happy, like <laughs> genuinely. Okay, now let's take a look at a small selection of the final photos. You will find more photos over on Instagram at Heliophobics, also linked down in the description. Make sure to check that out as well. So if you can remember, right in the beginning I have shown you guys how you can use a polarizer on multiple photos so you can layer them later in Photoshop. And this is what I've done right here. So you can see that I have taken both photos, put them from Lightroom to Photoshop as layers, took the top layer, put a mask on it, masked everything out, inverted the mask, and then I've masked back in the side window, layered it on top of the rest of the car, so that the side window and the front windshield are both polarized, I think you can say. So that way I got rid of the reflections in the side windows as well as in the windshield in just one final photo. And that looks amazing, I think. It's also one of my favorite photos from the shoot. Then there's this shot I want to show you. I absolutely love it. I can't tell you why. Um, I think it has just something to do with the background and the general perspective of the photo. It's, it's incredible. I look at it, I'm always like, yeah, that. That photo is amazing. Then there's also the photo of the S1 in front of the hangar. I think it looks really nice as well. And we've also got some more rollers, of course, which look incredible. Not in all, I can only say that everything in combination was perfect. The weather was amazing. It wasn't like harsh sunlight or anything. The cars have been looking amazing. The location was great. So the only thing I did literally was just pressing the shutter. That was all I did. 300 gigabytes of shooting later. Um, I think I'm done. Also, great thanks to all the French people there, to Benoui especially and his wife. It was great and um, yeah. I think that's it for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please, as always, leave a like, hit the sub button and just give me a little comment down below telling me what you've liked and what you didn't like so I can improve in the future videos and everything and yeah. Now everything that's left to say is have a great day, go out, shoot something and Enjoy your life, I guess. See ya!